Wow! Ang ganda mo! Ay, ang taba mo! Kumusta po kayo? Welcome back to my channel. Let's go Tagalog, the channel that is dedicated in guiding you in your journey in learning a beautiful language, Tagalog, the language of the Philippines. This video is very significant because we are now concluding our long discussion on Group 2 Personal Pronouns. Many weeks ago, we have started a discussion on a huge topic, the Tagalog personal pronouns. We have learned that there are different groups of Tagalog personal pronouns, and we have completed Group 1. Group 1 personal pronouns have many names, like direct personal pronouns, subjective personal pronouns, focused personal pronouns, and nominative personal pronouns. Group 1 personal pronouns include ako, tayo, Kami, ikaw, ka, kayo, siya, sila. If you wish to review group 1 pronouns, you can check out episode 21 to 24. I am providing the link in the description down below. We have been talking about group 2 personal pronouns for several videos now. Group 2 personal pronouns are known with different fancy names like indirect personal pronouns, objective personal pronouns, out-of-focus personal pronouns, genitive pronouns, possessive pronouns. The pronouns under group 2 include ko, natin, namin, mo, ninyo, niya, nila. Like I said, we've been discussing group 2 pronouns for a number of videos now, particularly on how they are used. Let's review. Group 2 pronouns are used in several instances like as possessive pronouns expressing one's ownership of something, in what is called object-focused sentences, in phrases that talk about oneself with temporal adverbs, as a preposition or words that convey location, as part of a question, in imperative sentences, and in exclamatory sentences, which is the topic of this video. If this is your first time watching my channel, please check out my previous videos to get you on track. You can go into my playlist and check out the videos labeled personal pronouns. Before we continue, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you will be updated of new videos I'm coming out regularly. Now, on to our topic. Group 2 personal pronouns are also used in instances when you wish to express amazement or admiration, which are normally done as an exclamation. Let me illustrate. Suppose you saw a beautiful woman. You can say, Ang ganda niya? She's so beautiful. The construction of this sentence is very simple. You start with ang. We have learned in episode 12 and 13 that ang is a case marker preceding a common noun. In this case, ang is functioning not as a case marker, but as a degree adverb, like so, that modifies the adjective ganda or beautiful. Then the personal pronoun is added, which is the subject of the sentence. The sentence is different from siya ay maganda or maganda siya. She is beautiful. These sentences in formal and casual forms are simple statements of fact or opinion by the speaker. These sentences are not being said as an exclamation. And no, these sentences use group 1 pronouns. I wish to point out that in the second example, we use maganda as the adjective. While the first example, we use ganda as the adjective. Ganda is actually not an adjective, but a root word from which new words like verbs, nouns, and adjectives can be formed like maganda, an adjective, and kagandahan, a noun. I am referring to ganda as an adjective in the first example because it is functioning like an adjective. And I will do this with the rest of my examples in this video. In normal speech, you can add interjections or words that convey emotion or surprise. Like, for example, Wow! Ang guapo niya! Wow! He's so handsome! 
Yes, in modern Tagalog speech, we use wow. You can also use this pattern on yourself. Like for example, Grabe ang galing ko. Seriously, I'm so good. Grabe is a word we use to express something serious, extreme, or exceptional. Let's try another example. Grabe ang tanga ko. Unbelievable. I'm such an idiot. Now, let's try using these examples, but this time with subjects in the plural form. Like what we have learned in episode 13, the second syllable of the adjectives will be reduplicated. Let's try. Wow! Ang gaganda nila. Wow, they're so beautiful. Ay, ang gagwapo nila. Oh, they're so handsome. Grabe ang gagaling natin. Seriously, we're so good. Grabe ang tatanga natin. Unbelievable, we're such idiots. Let me run through some more examples. Here, the subject is mo or you in the first person. But it can be any other personal pronoun. Let's try. Ang ganda mo. You're so beautiful. Ang pangit mo. You're so ugly. Ang taba mo. You're so fat. Ang payat mo. You're so thin. Ang bagal mo. You're so slow. Ang bilis mo. You're so fast. Ang galing mo. You're so good. Ang tanga mo. You're such an idiot. Ang bango mo. You smell so good. Ang baho mo. You smell bad. You can also add an interjection before a sentence whenever appropriate. Now, speaking of interjections, I am going to give you two interjections which you will find useful. The first one is, aray ko. Aray ko means ouch, which I suspect comes from the Spanish ay, which also means ouch. Now, I, I really don't know that for sure. It is just my suspicion because they suspiciously sound similar. Why do we add ko in aray ko? Because aray ko also means it hurts me. Make sense? Now, the other interjection I wish to share is belat mo. Belat mo means serves you right or you got what you deserve. This is said to someone you take pleasure in seeing getting hurt, humiliated, or experiencing misfortune. I think Berlat Mo is similar to the German Schadenfreude. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, please forgive me. Schadenfreude! A substitute for Berlat Mo and something that is more commonly used is Mabuti nga sa iyo which uses the group 3 pronoun iyo and is often shortened to buti nga sayo, which literally means good for you, which actually is good for you for your misfortune. I find this particular use of group 2 personal pronouns in exclamatory sentences more fun because of its colorful nature. Speaking of which, you can use these colorful expressions. Ang puso ko, literally my heart. This can be said by someone who is angry to emphasize his or her emotion that may cause him or her to have a heart attack. In this pattern, ang is functioning as a case marker to introduce the noun puso or puso mo, literally your heart. You can say this to pacify someone who is angry to remind him or her that his or her anger can cause him or her a heart attack. Using this pattern, you can insert any body parts like ang kamay ko, my hand. Say this when someone squeezes your hand very tightly. Ang kamay mo, literally your hand, but is actually saying watch your hand. Ang pa ako, my foot. You can say this when someone steps on your foot. Or ang pa mo, literally your foot. Or watch your foot. You can also say, Ang tiyan ko, my stomach or my tummy. You can say this when you're full or you're having stomach pain. Again, you can squeeze in any body parts into this pattern for a colorful Tagalog expression. So now you know how to use group to personal pronouns in exclamatory sentences. Or as we say in Tagalog, alam mo na, now you know. Or you can say, alam ko na, now I know. Na is a particle that stands for now or already. 
if you speak Spanish na function the same way as ya. Speaking of Spanish, alam ko na is ahora se in Spanish, which structurally is the same as now I know. Cool? Alam ko na can also be said like an exclamation. When you suddenly realize something or you suddenly have a flash of brilliance. In this sense, it is exactly the same as the Greek Eureka. Language is such a wonderful thing, no? This ends our discussion on group 2 personal pronoun. I hope you are enjoying our journey so far. And if you are, please hit the like button. It will do a lot for this young channel. In my next video, we will begin a new chapter. And that is group 3 personal pronouns. I hope to see you then. Maraming salamat at hanggang sa susunod.